Hello, it's Don. Okay, time flies. Already time for a 100 hour service on our Yamaha 115. That didn't take long, but hey, that's a good thing we're using the boat. Hey, before I get started on this, I just wanna say, uh, this is two days after Hurricane Helene. Uh, I'm here on the west coast of Florida. And uh, you know, I fared well, uh, you know, small ranches, a lot of water, whatnot, but I'm okay. Uh, prayers to everybody in North Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, right on up the Southeast. Oh my, what a horrible storm. The, uh, the images I've been seeing are just uh, catastrophic. I feel so bad for these people. Um, and having been there, you know, we had Hurricane Ian here uh, a couple, two, three years ago now, and it, it's a horrible, it, it, it's a lot to recover from. And uh, so, hey, if any way you can help those people, reach out, can't say enough. So anyways, let's get to work on this motor. Um, 100 hour service, you know, most people go to the dealer. Uh, the dealers, they charge a lot of money, you know, minimum probably $150 an hour anymore. Uh, and they don't necessarily, you know, you, you don't have to have them do it, you can do it. Uh, it doesn't void your warranty by any stretch. And in fact, in an owner's manual, which my cheater's on here so we can see, they got a full page on maintenance and it's, maintenance and it's very descriptive, it tells you step by step, you know, what to do. Um, you know, I'm just coming to my 100 hours and I follow it down. Uh, here, number one, anoids, external anoids. It says 100 hours, um, inspect or replace if necessary. So that's just your zincs on the motor. Um, and sometimes in salt water, especially when they're left in water, they get real bad. Uh, here's one on the bottom. And mine looks very good, you know, a little light dust and it's really good. Uh, but if that looked corroded, you want to change those. That's a sacrificial metal. In other words, uh, if you've got electrolysis, if something's going to start getting eaten, it gets eaten and not your motor. So you want to stay up on top of that. Um, there's a couple more. Uh, right here's one on my, uh, my port tab, what they call that. And once again, it's just got a little light dusting on and I'll clean that up a little bit. Uh, it don't need to be replaced yet. If it's got any pitting at all, replace it. They're not expensive. You know, when they say when in doubt, change it out. There's some more internal inside the motor, inside the head that uh, need to be serviced, but not yet, not the 100 hour service and they should be fine. Um, and I'll just go down a couple of these, but I'm not gonna go through the whole list. If you got your owner's manual, it tells you what to do, but I'm gonna hit the, the main ones that you may need help with. Um, anoids. Uh, your battery, you know, check, check your battery level. That's got nothing to do with the motor, but check your, if you have an, uh, ma a maintenance battery, one that's not maintenance free, you know, check to make sure your levels are right. Make sure your cables are all good, not green. This is all just common sense, important stuff. Uh, you know, your cowling lock lever, you know, make sure none of that's corroded. Uh, engine starting, noise and condition. You know, when you run your motor, we're gonna, we're gonna change the uh, engine oil in here and it says to warm the motor up for five minutes before you do that. I and mean, that's good practice. Um, so, but you know, if, if your motor's not sounding right when you start it, you know you got a problem, hey, this thing is a warranty, take it to the dealer. You know, don't start messing around there. Uh, engine idle noise, engine oil, obviously it, we can replace that in 100 hours, we're doing that. Um, several things, uh, spark plugs, they don't need to be changed. It says pull them out and inspect them. You know, if they're bad, change them, obviously. But uh, we're gonna pull them all out. This is a four cylinder, we'll lay them on the table, one, two, three, four, mark which one, and they should all look basically the same. You know, if you got one that's black and the other ones are light tan or whatever, you got an issue on that cylinder. Um, once again, now it's time to take a dealer. Hey, this thing's not firing right on number two or whatever the case may be. But uh, we're gonna start at the bottom because you know, I don't bend down so good anymore. And we're gonna change the gear, the gear lube in the lower unit. And this is not hard to do. There's an, uh, some important things. There's not a lot of tools we need for this job. A large common screwdriver. And this is very important. You want one that fits these screws perfectly. They're tight, they're real tight. And if you booger up that screw thread, you're not gonna be happy. Cause then you need a little impact screwdriver to get it out and just, just don't mess them up. Get the right size screwdriver. So you got one at the top, this is your fill level. And you got one at the bottom down here. This is your drain right there. And they say to tilt the motor up to where that's the lowest point. So we've already done that. So let's just go ahead and do this. Let me get you set up here. So, you know, I got some cardboard down here. I put it into a clear plastic jug. I like to look at my oil, make sure there's no contaminants in it. And it'll also be a magnet on that bottom screw. But rather than take that top one out first, we're gonna take the bottom one out first and it'll just barely come out. Uh, just so you don't make a big mess. Always keep your rag handy. But see that screwdriver fits in there good and tight. That's important. 
And I can't tell you over the years how many of I've seen just all boogered up. Okay, so that's all the way out. We'll pull it out. And there's a magnet on the end. It says check for extra filings and metal shavings. That's nothing, a little goo there. So I don't see any issue there at all. All right, so right now you're saying, hey, Don, you don't have no fluid. It ain't coming out. No, it's in a vacuum because of that little bitty hole right there. And once we take that top one out, you're going to see, it's just going to, right now it all looks good. It looks, it's clean, it's yellow, there's no water in it. If it's milky looking, once again, you want to get that lower unit serviced. All right, well, let's take this top one out and everything's going to change. There we go. Oh, there went my little gasket, right there. Okay. And you can see that lower unit oil looks good. There's a little dirt in the pan that was in there, but there's no water in here, no contaminants. This looks really good. It doesn't hold very much. And once again, when you read that owner's manual, it's very descriptive. It tells you, okay, use this brand of oil. They want you to use theirs, of course, but you want to use anything at least with the, all the ratings. That, that it's an 80, 90 gear lube, and it's got to have all the proper ratings for this service. It doesn't hold much. It tells you how much it holds. It's a little over, oh, I'd say about two thirds of a quart. It's not even a whole quart. Uh, but I got a little device that hooks on here to, to, to fill this and you can put the end of your bottle in there and kind of squeeze it in and it, it sucks. Um, it, I'll show you when we get to there, but oh, there we go. We're gonna let this drain. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get my, uh, my filler apparatus. I'm gonna show you how this works and uh, it, it makes life simple. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back on the job. That's uh, just straining out its last little teeny bit now. I want to show you this stuff here. This really make your life wonderful. This is a little cheap old oil pump kit. You can get these at your auto parts stores. They're cheap. But I can't remember what I paid for it. Seven dollars, ten dollars. It wasn't much. It's, it's got a lot of uses, and this is one of them. You really don't want to do this job without it. Uh, so it comes with two different length straws, if you will. Here's the short one, and I keep a little cap on that to keep that clean when I'm not using it. And this makes it the right length for a quart bottle that you see here. Here's my Yamaha gear case lube, 8090, right from Yamaha. We know this is the right stuff. Okay. Get this opened up. So now these little things, they've got a uh, screw and there it fits every size, you know, a big jug or a little jug. So we got the little one in here. We're gonna put that in here. Now I guess if you had to, you could push that up into that little hole and, and try to get fluid in there, but you're gonna spill a lot. You're gonna make a mess. It's, it's, it's a real pain in the neck. So here's a little kit. Uh, this is the handiest thing in the world. I got this from, from Amazon, I think. Uh, and I've already got it put together for the right size because I did my 10 hour service before. But this is the same thread as that lower unit. So I'm gonna thread that into that lower unit at the bottom. We're gonna fill it from the bottom. And then I'm gonna push this hose on here. And then I'm just gonna pump the fluid in there until it comes out the top hole. All the screws are out now. So let's, it's about done now. Let's get down here and get this done. Let's show you how this works. This is, this is slick and it's so easy, but you don't wanna mess it up. There we go. Okay, so. You can see we're right down to a trickle now. Oh, by the way, these, these screws are the same threads. Oh, they're a little different maybe, but your top one doesn't have the magnet, your bottom one does, okay? So when you put them back in, you put the bottom one with the magnet. That way it catches any filings or anything that can be a problem. So like I said, this is a kit. It comes with all different sizes. I already know from previous this is the right size. I'm just gonna thread that into my bottom screw hole. Just like that. I can get this out of the way. I'm gonna push that hose on there. And that's why we always put cardboard down. I don't care how hard you try, it's gonna make a mess. There we go, there's that. Okay, now we're leaving that top one out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the motor level now. You don't have to get a level out, just mostly level. There we go. Like I said, we're leaving that top one out and we're just gonna start filling it up. We're just gonna start pumping the 
pumping the fluid here now. There we go. And this is a full quart, and it's not going to take this whole quart. It only takes about maybe two thirds of it. And when it comes out this top hole, we're going to stop. I mean, you know, you don't want it flowing out that top hole. When it gets there, stop. You're done. Too much oil in your lower units, just like too much oil in your engine or your car, it's not a good thing. Whoop, there we go. See, it just came out that hole right there. It just came out. That's it. Stop. We're going to put the screw in now. And then your owner's manual tells you what torque setting they want on this. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I think it was 16 pounds. But I don't have a torque wrench. It's a slotted screwdriver. So I'm just going to get it good and tight. Okay? I don't want to booger up them threads. All right. So now you say, well, how do I get the bottom screw in without making it all spill out? That's okay, you would actually, that's okay, you would want it to. What I'm gonna do is help this motor back up so I can get to it with that big screwdriver. Okay, Put our catch bucket here. Pull this hose off. And you remember when we took this out, the fluid barely come out. So it's, once again, it's gonna barely come out because now it's in a vacuum with that top screw in. Okay, got my hose off, take my fitting off, and see, it's just barely coming out, and just a little bit like that's okay, it, it'll put it into a little bit of a vacuum, that's a good thing. Alright, we'll get our screw back in there, one with the magnet goes in the bottom. Make sure your screwdriver's got a really good bite. This is when you want to snug it down good. You don't want that to come loose. In the owner's manual, it says to put new gaskets on there every time. I don't know. You change the gaskets on your oil plug of your car when you change it every time you're supposed to. Uh, this is 100 hours. They are in perfect shape. I'm, I'm not doing it, but I'm not endorsing that I don't. Just saying. The owner's manual says to change them. Okay, so this is good. We got no... Uh, we got no leaks. We'll double check our tightness of our screws. We got our perfect fitting screwdriver. That's important. I know I've said it a couple times. I got to stress it. It's important. That screwdriver fits perfect. That's all the way tight. This one, all the way tight. Okay, that's good. Give me a minute to get this mess cleaned up, and we'll uh, we'll go down the list a little further. Okay, we got that mess cleaned up. Uh, well, I say mess, you know, it's not really messy, but if you've ever worked with gear oil, that's some sticky, icky stuff. You know, I got that job done. I got it out of the way. I got my hands washed, soap and water. I mean, I'm going to get dirty again, but I just got to get that stuff gone. So, like I said in your uh, manual here, it gives you, a, you know, a list, of, you know, a page and a half of things they want you to check. I've highlighted some of the important ones here. Uh, and next, I've done 100 hours fuel filter. All right, right here on the side of your motor, we got a fuel filter. Let's get you set up here. First thing we gotta do is take the cowling off. There'll be a latch front and back. Open the latch. And I don't know that all Yamahas are the same, but they're probably similar. We'll get that out of our way. Oh. Back here in the corner, we can see our fuel filter. Let's make a little more room to get to that. This little plastic cover on the back here, we're gonna take that off anyways and inspect the spark plugs. This just snaps on. You can see the little rubber garments in there. You just pull them loose, it snaps right off. Same on the other side, pull that one off. And this one off the bottom. Boom, that's out of our way. Now we can get to everything really good. So I'm gonna pull that fuel filter off. And it should only be hand tight. And we're just gonna inspect it. You know, if it's full of water or gonking and whatnot, you'll wanna replace that filter. Um, but I don't anticipate that I should be having any problems, but we're just going to take it out and look. 
Oh, there's a wire going to it. It senses water. Don't forget to take that wire loose. You don't want to twist the wire off getting it off of there. You know, I bet you this whole thing would pop off. Look at that. Look at that. Now we can get to it a little easier. There we go. And I can see the filter inside there. It's perfect. It had got not a speck of any dirt in it. I'm looking down inside the fuel filter and there's no water. Everything's crystal clear. If there's water, water's heavier than fuel. It'll sink to the bottom. You'll see it down in there, but this is just perfect. So that's good. And there's actually, you can hear that, that float in there. Water's heavier than fuel. So if you had water in there, it would go to the bottom. It would float that float up. Anyway, this is all good. We're gonna put this back on. This is clean. It just pops on there. We can just double check. No dirt, no debris, no nothing. That's good. This is just 100 hours. I got all perfect fuel tank, everything in here. If I was at all skeptical, I'd go to my Yamaha dealer. I'd get me a new fuel filter. I wouldn't even mess around. Okay, let's put that back on. Once again, no special tools needed. This is just hand tight. And when it's right, this little tab here points right out to the rear. There we go. It's just an O-ring in there. That's good. This filter just snaps into place on this little bracket. Boom, we're right back where it was. We'll put our plug back on. There we go. That's all secure now. One of the things they said to check your latches. Here's your latch. You can, like you can see right from the factory, that's greased real good. No problem there. Okay, we got that fuel filter checked. Next it says to, uh, well, I don't know if it says next, but inspect the, your spark plugs. And this is a little tricky. I'm gonna go wash this gas off my hands. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, back on the job. By the way, when I dump that fuel out, there's my oil catch can. Always dispose of it properly. Okay, so this is done. Here's that little, see the little brackets it rides on? Just a little rubber wings on there. So that makes it real easy to get to. Now the spark plugs, are behind the coils all the way back in there. We got one, two, three, four on each. And uh, we're gonna have to take them out. Let me turn the motor this direction so we can see better. All right, so what you gotta do is gotta take these coils out. Two number 10 bolts is all holds those in there. And I'm already rigged up, ready to go for that. And they're not tight, they're just there. Got my little cordless drill. You can see that was nothing to get that off. It's just a coil. Okay, got all those off. Now your coil, there you go. It's got that long snout, goes right to my spark plug. Way back in here, you see it. So you need an extension. That's uh, number 16, if I'm not mistaken. Let's make sure, yeah, that's number 16. Long extension, get back in there. So let's go ahead and get them spark plugs out one by one. They got a torque spec, if I'm not mistaken, of 20 pounds on these spark plugs. 20 foot pounds. And then once again, it tells you that in your manual, you know, they, they, they want you to do this. They want you to do it right. They want you to know about your motor. I mean, if you don't understand this stuff, it, it, it messes with you if you're not mechanical, you know, take it to your dealer. Um, but this is pretty basic. If you're at all mechanical, you won't have no problems. All right, so here's your spark plug out. Look at the length on that. Anyways, we're inspecting that. That all looks good. No carbon buildup on that at all. No wetness of fuel. That looks good. It tells you, once again, in your manual, it should have a spark plug gap of between 031 and 035. I think I'll double check that, but let me go get my gap tool and we'll check that out. Okay, so I got a full set of feeler gauges, but you, you know, you ever been in the auto parts and see a bucket full of these little things? No, they're not subway tokens, they're gap tools. And you can see 020, 030, 040, you know, right on down the line. And you just put your spark plug on there and run it across. 
And looks like I'm going right to about 034. Well, that's right in the money, I say, and there's nothing wrong with that plug at all. We're putting it back in. And that's what they're saying to do. Take them out and inspect them. You don't see a problem, put it back in. Okay, it says 18 foot pounds, 18 foot pounds. I so many times have seen people over tighten their spark plugs, strip them out in the block. We're gonna go back one, two, 18 pounds. I got a torque wrench. You don't have to have it, but you know, it keeps you out of trouble. We're at 18 pounds. Okay, well, I'm gonna get back on that. So we're gonna go down the line and get it. Now we're gonna do each spark plug. We're gonna inspect it. We're gonna check the gap on it. If one looks black and the other one's donor and whatnot, we don't have an issue, but if they all look the same, we're good with that. Let me finish this up and we'll, uh, we'll get back to the next step. All right. We've got our fuel filter checked, cleaned. It was all good. Our lower unit oil change, click. Here's a, you know, they said check your lashes for grease and all that. That's all good. Everything's working good there. Same, we got another one in the front. Uh, they say check all your fuel lines, you know, your high pressure lines. Uh, you know, common sense, just look them over. If you see something looks like it's been leaking or if it looks like it's cracked or messed up, you know, deal with it. Don't leave it. Don't leave it. it says to check your power trim. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you see a puddle underneath your motor, that's a sure sign you got some problems. Um, you know, obviously this is working, it's going up. But, uh, you know, we're gonna look underneath here. We'll look at our trim cylinder. We got no oil leaking nowhere. Everything looks real good. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is common sense, but take the time to do it. And it tells you each one, let's just go look at this for a second. It tells you what can be inspected and what you should or do need to replace at 100 hours. Um, right here, uh, see, it's got its maintenance schedule. Uh, here's your uh, fuel filter. Can be disassembled, inspection, or replace as necessary. 100 hours, black circle, do it. All right, so we, you know, we, ours is good, don't need to replace. All right here, fuel line, high pressure, 100 hours. Inspection, everything's good there, no leaks. Uh, inspection, fuel line, low pressure. Once again, you know, a lot of this stuff, common sense. You see something leaking or cracked, fix it. Uh, your fuel pump, nothing to do there, that's all good. Uh, your uh, gear oil, 100 hours. Replacement, we did it, it's replaced. Greasing points, there's several greasing points on this engine and that's important, most people don't grease these things like they should, you know, and then they have problems. Uh, on the front of your tilt tube up here, there's a place on the left and right to grease it, make sure you do it. Uh, another one that people overlook, uh, this one stays greased all the time, I'm, I'm not about this maintenance stuff. I don't wait 100 hours. Um, but I grease all this stuff. Your tilt tube here, it's got a grease fitting up inside. Let's see which side it's on. Oh, there it is. It's right up in the middle in there. I don't know how well you can see it, but anyways, it's greased. Oh, you know, a couple times since I've had it, it's salt water. You, you just can't, you can't do it too much. Uh, you know, if you do, it just comes out and you wipe it off and you're good to go. Um, we're about to do the oil. It says to run the motor first. We're going to do that. And while it's running, we'll make sure it's pumping water the way it's supposed to. The motor sounds good, starts good, uh, as they recommend in there. Um, you know, if you're the kind of guy that runs shallow water a lot, I, I would change my water pump, you know, every season, maybe maybe twice if you run shallow water a lot, sucking a lot of sand, if you're placed a lot of dirty water. Uh, I primarily fish offshore deep water. I'm nowhere near the dirt. Uh, and I'm gonna let this water pump go here probably for another 50 hours before I change it. And it'll be fine then, but I'll just change it because uh, you know, I go out far. I don't want to have a problem. All right, so um, let's crank this thing up and get the hose running. Oh, that's an important thing. Never run it. This is your flush hose here. This is for just for fresh water flushing the motor. Don't run the motor off that hose. It doesn't lubricate the water pump down in the way it's supposed to. Just, just don't do it. Get your set of pair of muffs, put them on the motor, run it there. Okay, we're going to crank it up. Start the water first.
step on here. Everything's looking good, as it should. All right, thanks for joining me. Okay, it's all warmed up, ready to go. Uh, if you're not sure, your owner's man tells you what oil capacity is, but they tell you for a couple of different motors. Obviously, that's a you know pretty basic on what Yamaha does with all our motors, Yamaha. But right here on top, a three-liter motor or a 3.2-liter. This is a three-liter motor, uh, and it tells you use uh, you know your SCA 5W30 or 10W30, and you know if you're in a hot environment like us. Uh, or real, real cold, you want to use a little heavier oil, but this is a th three liter motor. It says to use 3.2 US quarts. That's pretty easy. This is a one gallon, one gallon pail of Yamaha Lube, marine full synthetic, and uh, I'm just gonna put three quarts in there and I'll top off that last little point two as it needs it. Uh, right here's our drain. And if you have an oil sucker, you can suck it out of the, out of the dipstick hole first makes it a little easier but what i do here's a one gallon jug and i'll be able to hold that right there and catch it hopefully without not making a mess what size is this should just leave my cheaters on when i'm doing this okay a 14 millimeter right here this is our oil drain And I'm pushing in on that the whole time I'm doing it so I know it's all the way out. I'm gonna get my bucket here. And there we go. And my old drain plug stayed on my wrench. That's a good thing, I don't have to fish it out. See, that looks a little dark. It was time. That was easy. Now right here, right side of the motor, here's your oil filter. Let's see if this wrench goes small. And here's something I do too. I always take a, a, in this case, a white marker and I mark when I changed it last. So it was February of 24 that I changed it at the, well, 211 hours. That was on my tachometer from the last motor. So anyways, I know now that it's, I'm at 197 or I'm sorry, 297. So. Uh, it's not quite been 100 hours, but it's time. See, that motor was a little dark in oil. So let's get this off of here. Okay, I always put a little oil on them threads first, a little oil on that O-ring. And don't go nuts, over tighten it, just, just snug, that's all. That's it, I'm not going any more than that. All right, I'm gonna get my marker, I'm gonna mark that I put the, today's date and the amount of hours on my tachometer so I can keep track of this stuff. I'm gonna fill up uh, my three quarts of oil, which is right here on the back, right there's our fill. Why we got the back off makes it a lot easier. Just tilt this back up level. You want the motor level when you're getting your oil right. It's just about perfect there. All right, let's go get a funnel and we'll get that done. And we got this job wrapped up. Okay, we got the motor level. Got our funnel in place. We've got our screw back in for the drain plug. Always make double sure it's been torqued down. Got our filter in place. We'll mark the date on that. Let's pour in uh, 
It says 3.2, I think it was. Speak up here again. 3.2. So I'm gonna pour th three quarts in there for right now. And then it says, you know, let it sit five minutes or so and then just come back and regulate it. You don't want to overfill it. That's not a good thing. And three. So I'm right at three quarts. I'm going to let that settle for a little bit and I'll come back and a and, uh, little here, a little there, get that point two just right. I'll run the motor one more time. Like I said, you don't want to overfill it. Okay, so we touched the high points, the, the, the little sticker points. Uh, what I think is most important, obviously, the gear lube, your motor oil, uh, your fuel filter, make sure that's clean. Your grease points, especially if you're salt water, can't stress that enough. You can over grease it. Grease them, grease them all the time. Don't wait 100 hours, grease them. Uh, your anoids, your uh, your zincs, it's real important on a salt water motor. Really keep an eye on them. If they start getting corroded and pitted at all, uh, get them gone, they're cheap. Uh, here's one on the bottom once again. Uh, get them gone. There's some inside the block too uh, for further and we'll, we'll get into them another time. Uh, but this is the basics of it. Read your owner's manual. It gives you all your specs, your fluid levels. tells you everything you need to know. Uh, it's okay to do it yourself. So uh, hey, thanks for joining me. Have a great day.